It's time for the new and improved Just Got Combo list. Let's see how it goes. What is going on, everybody? And welcome back to another standard gameplay video. I hope you guys are doing exceptionally well today. We are talking Just Guy Combo today, but specifically the one updated by our good friend, partner in crime for the Glorious Sunrise podcast, Country Fried. He actually built this list for the podcast episode that came out this morning. Uh, so if you missed that, go over, check it out. It is on our YouTube channel. It's also on the podcast app and Spotify if you just want to listen there. So please do check that out. But uh, we dive really, really deep into this deck, why it's good, why it isn't. He has made a couple of last minute changes to it. Uh, since we actually discussed it on the podcast, but I think they are for the better. I'm not going to go into too much detail. Most of us know how this deck works. The idea is to get a Goldspan Dragon really, really beefed up with a show of confidence, playing a lot of stuff off of things like Leer uh, with the Graveyard Synergy, and then either attacking in or using Kazul's Fury for the win. Alternatively, we do have a Crackle with Power as just a way to win the game on the spot. Uh, but this deck got a lot of really good upgrades. We got things like Boon of Safety. We got things like Slip Out the Back. Uh, we have things like Big Score. Big Score being one of the best. Uh, truly just a reprint of Unexpected Windfall with an easier to play mana value. So not too red here. This is a strict upgrade uh, and certainly one that I'm excited to try out here. This is the first time I will be trying it out. Um, excuse me. I do believe he trimmed down on the Leer down to just two. Uh, which does make sense. You don't want doubles of these in any capacity. Uh, so I think this makes sense. But all in all, I think this deck list is very well suited, very well upgraded. And I'm excited to try it out. So we're going to dive right in. Again, not going to take too much time here. Go check out Country Fried, though, and go check out the Glorious Sunrise podcast. It really would mean a lot, guys. Let's do it, though. Let's see how the games go. Hopefully we don't mess misplay because there are plenty of opportunities for that. But let's see how we do. All right, guys, here we are for game number one. And how do we feel about this hand? I think it's okay. It's not amazing, but it's certainly not terrible either. Uh, we can probably... We'll see what the opponent is up to here. There is a, a, a world where we kind of need to shoot something early on, so I want to leave that available. Um, I think I'm just going to lay this down. This is a tricky one because our, our lands are basically all tapped and so that really does make a big difference here uh this is kind of a nice draw though so we can do this leave up either fading hope or spike field hazard next turn have the expressive iteration available that we can just go ahead and throw a land out off after uh that now do we want to go ahead and bounce this here um i'm actually okay to do this um my thought is if we can kind of aggressively uh, get stuff into our graveyard, it gives us a lot of replayability later on. So to me, it seems like a no-brainer. Let's see what we hit off of this expressive iteration. That's interesting. Hmm. Uh, I feel like we need another expressive iteration, though, honestly. I think the, the digging is pretty important. Uh, because obviously, eventually, that's that's kind of what we're trying to do, is dig for uh, either the Goldspan Dragon or, at, at the very least, the Leer is what we need to get first. Uh, this is going to be a tricky matchup for us, though. This is going to be a very removal-heavy deck, if I had to assume. Uh, and so we are going to need to play a bit carefully. Uh, those shield counters on the Boon of Safety could be very, very relevant, but we'll see. They, they do have the snow-covered lands, so my assumption is this is a Blood on the Snow deck. Um, we'll see. We will see. Interesting. Okay. Uh, I mean, again... I think it's pretty clear we just go for the expressive iteration again. Uh, try and continue sculpting that hand. Uh, and again, I think we're going to have to go for another expressive iteration. Uh, let's do this. Um, I'm going to put this and then throw this into my hand or into the exile zone. I think I'm just going to play this out uh, for the land side. We can leave up the fading hope. If they get a land off of this, it's okay. Uh, because it just means they're not attacking. Importantly, we haven't lost... Uh, we're, we're still at the same number of cards we've been at before, but importantly, they are also not really dealing a ton of damage at this point. So uh, we do have some ways we can get out of this. Uh, just digging further is obviously step one. Uh, okay. So at the end of the turn, we'll just fading hope. I don't love hitting the tracker, but I do think it's probably just the right call. Uh, and we do get a scry as well. I think we'll throw that on the bottom. We're actually pretty good with lands. We don't really need lands. If anything, we need, uh, well, exactly this. Um, we'll go ahead and throw this out. Um, 
I suppose we can go ahead and big score. Throwing away, like, slip out the back. Actually, maybe it's expressive iteration. Yeah, let's do that. Interesting. Okay. Um. Cool. Well, then I think we just pass. Again, we're setting ourselves up pretty well. We've got a lot of the mana that we need. It's just we haven't really found a gold span or anything like that yet, uh, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. They have got some very, very scary stuff. Um, all right, let's see what they've got. They may just play the tracker again. Sure. <clears throat> so there is a world where we kill this, but we're not going to do it. I don't think. Um, we'll go ahead and draw another land, huh? Very unfortunate draws. Um, I mean, we play the land. We have no creatures. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I think we just pass. We can send our class at instant speed, kick it, and then spike field hazard to get rid of this if we feel the need to. Uh, but I'd rather them like get something else down, like a graveyard trespasser or another sh uh, shigeki. Something that we can use to, to really force the issue here. Now, if they do activate the Hive of the Eye Tyrant, or, uh, yeah, excuse me, Hive of the Eye Tyrant, then that would be kind of nice. It looks like they're going to plan to. Uh, this is fine. Um, so, yeah, let's... Uh, we only get to do kill one of the things by doing this, so it's a little bit wasted, but I think it's okay. Um, I actually do think it's the Hive of the Eye Tyrant that we kill, not the Tracker. Um, the reason being, uh, they might have a Deadly Dispute or something like that, which is fine. Um, nope, they're just going to tap for black so they can pop that clue token, which makes a lot of sense. But I think that is really, really dangerous to our game plan. Anything that's going to um, potentially throw us into a, uh, a bad place is not something we want to do. Let's go ahead and I don't want to phase it out, do I? I think we need to save that. Part of me wants to phase it so it can't attack, but uh, the other part of me is just thinking now nah, we'll just take four. We're not in danger of dying yet. <laughs> uh, although if we keep drawing lands, we will be. Uh, so let's see what we can get here. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we can get something. They are pretty well tapped out. Uh, in fact, entirely tapped out, which is kind of nice. Um, just means they don't have a lot. They did invest a lot into that Hive of the Eye Tyrant, which I'm very, very happy to say is gone. They actually have to discard a card. Wow. Man, I wish we had that Spike Field Hazard as well. Uh, again, kind of unfortunate because we just don't have anything we can do. We can't draw. I, I mean, we're, we're kind of burnt out. So in the podcast episode, one of the things that I mentioned uh, is that this deck has, uh, at least when I play it, uh, and again, I could be playing it very wrong, but it does have a tendency to get to a position like this, where if you just don't have the pieces, uh, it, it doesn't really do anything and it just kind of stalls out. Uh, one of the things that I tried to do in my Riveteer's Treasure deck is give a lot of value to almost everything in the deck. Uh, and therefore, when you just draw any non-land card, it feels pretty good, even if it's, you know, mid, late game, whatever, you've got options. Uh, and that's one of the things that I feel this deck semi-lacks. It's certainly not, you know, once it goes off, it's great. But I think in this circumstance, obviously, we're seeing an example of we really just don't have that much. Um, and that's okay. I mean, that's just the reality of playing this deck. But it is fairly unfortunate because uh, we we just don't have anything. A burn down the house would not go amiss. We do have a one of in the list. Unfortunately, that is not going to do it. Um, go ahead and play the red, I guess. Uh, yeah, I mean, again, we just don't have anything we can do. That's uh, a, just an unfortunate place where we're at. So it is what it is. Anyway, guys, I hope your week is starting off well. I do hope you listened to the podcast. It was a blast to do. We're going to keep doing that every Monday as the plan. Um yeah um all right so they just have us here i'm gonna go ahead and concede let's jump into game two
What's up, guys? Before we jump into the next game, I just want to remind you, if you would like to pick up this month's Patreon rewards, feel free to do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I think we can keep this. We've got the Cinderclasm. We do even have the Unexpected Windfall, which I think was a piece we were missing in game one. If we could have gotten that, uh, I mean, we did have, I guess, a single um, big score, which was good, but we just didn't draw into any more. And with eight copies, you would kind of expect to see more of those, I would think. Um, okay. Let's go ahead and express a iteration. Let's see what we can pull. Ooh. Uh, definitely think we take the gold span here. Uh, I guess we'll do this and then this. I don't love that, but I think that's just our best bet. We'll just end up throwing this spike field hazard out as a land. We do really need to get to a fourth land here, so I'm hoping we draw one. Ooh, and unfortunately we don't. Um, okay, well. Uh, gonna have to get lucky here, I think. Uh, and again, showing off kind of a weakness of the deck in general, which is the land count. That generally isn't that big of a problem, but we just haven't gotten to that four mana yet, so unfortunately we just got unlucky. Um, <laughs> ironic. All right, well, it is technically a land, so I will happily take it. Uh, and we'll see what the opponent is looking to do here. It does look like they're on a Jund or Riveteer style deck, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, interesting. Okay, cool. Sure. There's a burn down the house, that's interesting. Um, so I think we just have to kind of go for this now. Um, I will throw, I think, a no safety away okay land is phenomenal uh exactly what we needed uh let's go ahead and pass here though yeah land was really really clutch there um we don't want to have to spend our treasure tokens yet if we don't have to uh and so this is a situation where we're just trying to kind of make it to get goldspan dragon down and hopefully protect it with things like slip out the back that they can't just um rip it down yeah that's scary. Um, let's go ahead and throw that gold span out. Uh, thankfully. So it's going to create a treasure token for us. We'll go ahead and let the damage in. Um, so truthfully, we can just wait. Uh, which I think we will. We do want to sequence this pretty pretty importantly all right so let's do this whoops 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 we don't actually need to kick it uh let's go ahead and do this we'll auto pick so we don't need to kick this they only have one toughness so it's pretty straightforward three for one which is great um and now it's a situation where they're gonna have to race us uh we do have a backup cinderclasm which is relevant we even have a burn down the house which could be really helpful um, we'll see. We do have that slip out the back as well. So if they go for a kill spell on the gold span dragon, we can at least protect it once. Um, we could try and get cute, but I don't think we need to. I don't know. We'll see. Yep. Uh, so this is the prime example why slip out the back is so good. <laughs> um, awesome. So it phases out, we get two treasure tokens, and they use a removal spell for no reason, essentially. Um, we'll resolve one, we'll resolve the other. And now, I think we will just go ahead and do this. We do use two treasure tokens in this aspect, but uh, we get rid of everything on the field for a clean slate next turn, uh, which I think is pretty relevant. We can use Burn Down the House as a more defensive spell uh and what i mean by that is we can just throw it out as a um as the three little one ones which seems pretty unexciting i know but uh i think is potentially very good here uh all right sorry huh? it's not an instance so that is something we need to consider all right um I think we'll wait a turn, though. I don't think we need to pull that trigger quite yet. You know what I'm saying? Like, they 
have got a lot going on and that's a little scary but i think we'll just see what happens here uh this is pretty awesome actually we just get to Dwari disruption that uh for a free counter essentially which is pretty great um okay all right so they do get a couple little tokens here which is not great for us but that's fine uh let's do this we'll attack in uh, we can Galvanic Iteration the, uh, <laughs> the, the Fading Hope just to kind of get some stuff dead here. Um, I weirdly really like that play. Let's do that. Let's just see. I think this is kind of funny. Um, let's bounce you. Let's bounce you. Uh, throw you on the bottom. Don't need that. This gets us two scries, which apparently is very relevant. Um, okay. These do have haste, yes. Okay, so I'm gonna wait, and let's just see what happens. We can burn down the house for the win if we need to, but um, kind of curious to see how this goes. This has been a weird game. We're kind of hand handling it okay, but this could turn in a heartbeat. That's kind of the trick with this, is that they've got reoccurring value with the uh, skeletal swarming. That truthfully, unless we just fight them off, we can't keep up with. Um, and here it looks like, yep, they got it. Um, and they gain that life, which is very, very difficult. Man, we are just flooding out. Look at how unlucky this is. Um, I think we just have to burn down the house here. We could have created the 3-1-1s, the one -ones, which is semi-relevant, but like, wow. Wow, they're throwing us the good game already. All right, sick. Yep. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, well, we can't do anything. Um, so they deal more than enough damage this turn to kill us. That is so unfortunate. We just got so unlucky with draws. Man, Country Fried, I'm not doing you justice, man. Let's jump into a game three. Hopefully we can get a win there. I hope, we'll see. All right, guys, here we are for game three. We got to try and do a little better this time. This is actually a relatively easy keep, though. We do have the the blue and the red mana. Leave up that spike field hazard turn one. Give up the uh, expressive iteration on the next turn. Um, if this happens to be an aggressive deck with the Cinderclasm and spike field hazard, we might be able to kind of sneak things out in the early turns, which would be great. Um, but I would ideally like to... If we can throw this out as a land, that's fine. The expressive iteration should help though. We'll we'll see what we can get here. Love these damnation sleeves, by the way. That's so sick. Um guys, I hope everybody is really enjoying Streets of New Capenna though. I hope you guys had a chance to play a little bit over the weekend. I unfortunately did not. I had a very busy weekend. Um, however, it was a blast. Uh, or it has been a blast so far, and I'm really, really loving the new sets. So I do encourage everybody to uh if you haven't gotten your hands on Streets of New Capenna, Check it out. Have some fun with this one. It's a great set. There's a lot of cool stuff that's going on with this one. Uh, a lot of really powerful things, I believe. And so I am uh, tremendously excited to continue on. We may end up throwing some of our flex days away for more standard days just because, I mean, it is a cool set. You know what I mean? Uh, all right. So we actually have a decision to make here, uh, which is do we want to leave up the Dwari disruption or do we not? My assumption is this spike field hazard is going to be relatively uneventful. Kazul's Fury could be good, but I'm not banking on it. I think what I'm going to do is just play the Kazul's Fury as the land and leave up that Tuari disruption. Not super sold that this is the best idea. Uh, truthfully, I'd love to dig further. But um, once we've got our lands established, more stuff becomes available off of that expressive iteration. So I kind of want to see... We can kind of push this and maybe hit a good luck charm off of the uh, Jawari Disruption here. But we'll see. I have high hopes. I have very high hopes. Um, yeah, I mentioned I had a very busy weekend. My uh, my wife and I, Caitlin and I, went to go see Jimmy Buffett, of all people. She has had this in her head for years that she really wants to go see Jimmy Buffett. Never had the opportunity. Um, always loved to listen to, to Jimmy Buffett with her dad. And so... While Jimmy Buffett is not my general style of music, it was a great show and it was an absolute blast to go see him. And so we had a we had a really fun time. It was awesome. Um, 
I think now I will go ahead and express a iteration. Chances are this could get countered. This looks like a four color deck though. I'm not sure that this is a counter heavy deck. We'll we'll see. Um, this is an interesting one. I don't know that I've seen this deck quite yet. I have seen a number of things, but not that. Ah, Riveteer's Charm. Huh? Oh, this is Bridge. <laughs> okay, uh, cool. So we will eventually need that, but I think we go Windfall. Uh, we'll throw Boon and then we'll throw Land. Uh, so this at the very least gives us an option for the Cinderclasm. We do have to discard a card. Let's uh, let's get rid of the Galvanic Iteration. <clears throat> One thing we can consider though, Galvanic Iteration into something like a big score is stupid good. <laughs> Uh, and so there is a world where that becomes a very relevant play in the next couple turns. Um, unfortunately, Jwari Disruption completely dead at the moment. Otherwise, I would be stoked because we could potentially hit something good this turn, but we'll see. Um, really interesting to see a, uh, a bridge deck like this. That's cool. All right. You got it. Uh, unfortunately, this does mean they've got a bridge coming down next turn. Um, and there's very little we can do about it. I'm trying to think. Next turn. If we get an untapped land, we can do some shenanigans to get rid of this gold span dragon. But other than that, we're kind of just in bad shape. Um, hmm. We'll see. I really like the look of this deck. Riveteer's Charm is, I think, one of the best charms, if not the best charm. It just seems so good. It deals with a lot. It's nice to know the opponent has it as well because um, it does exile graveyards. So something to consider. Um, hmm. I mean, I think it's just unexpected windfall. I think we just have to hit something here. Um, I'm going to get rid of the Spike Field Hazard. We do have the Jwari Disruption to play as a land if we need it. Okay, uh, we can do this. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we have not gotten very lucky with our hits, I feel like. Again, I could be playing this deck completely wrong as well. I'm not an expert at this one, so I have to imagine there's a lot of that going on, but... This is certainly a, uh, a difficult struggle. Interesting. I do like these, uh, the, the outlook here and like things like that. This is an interesting deck thinning mechanic uh, that I think might be a little underrated. So it's cool to see that. Opponent really taking the time to consider, which hey, I appreciate. This is the next guy. That's awesome. All right, gonna take a big hit here again. Um, next turn we do have Galvanic Iteration into Cinderclasm kicked to kill this, but that's such a janky way to do it. Um, I think I'd rather keep our game plan moving forward, but like they're gonna have like to vault and some big old things coming down here soon I have to imagine um fortunately we don't have enough to counter that so we just have to let it hit yeah uh this might be worth it now though because we're gonna hit two things with it which I think is definitely worth it so we will get galvanic iteration Hopefully I don't have anything weird off of the uh, treasure token. That would be the only thing I'd be a little concerned about, but. And we are going to play the defensive sweeper so we can get rid of these two things and hopefully be in the game a little bit longer. Uh, chances are they'd be able to kill us next turn if we didn't do this. So feel fairly, fairly justified in, in pulling the trigger on this. Uh... Thankfully, that deals absolutely no damage, too, which is kind of sick. All right. Let's hope. <clears throat> um, yep. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> 
yeah we are uh not looking so hot guys we may not get a win and you know what that's okay we don't always have to get a win uh it's just a little unfortunate all right sure Let's see one two three and then we can double up on the so we can do some really interesting things this coming turn let's let's go vanic iteration Let's unexpected windfall. We have to discard a card. I think that card will be slip out the back. This is the fun part of this deck where you get to double up on so much stuff is ridiculous. <laughs> um, but again, we had no we hit no threats. I mean, we just hit nothing. Um just have no gas we just have nothing again nothing i mean this is amazing to me that we are hitting so poorly um i mean we're gonna spend all of our treasure token but i think we just have to we have to do it uh we do get two more here which is fine but look at this wow we suck <laughs> um i'm saving the fading hope here for this by the way Part of me just wants to pull the trigger on this, like, now. That's great. So, because they did this, we actually get to bounce this and then... Unless... Well, I guess they could hit a land and then replay it, but that'd be about it. But this saves us a little bit of heartache here. I can't believe how unlucky our hits have been. This is insane. Uh, Country Fried, if you're watching and you usually do, I know. What the heck, man? I can't believe how, how, look at, I <laughs> mean, goodness. Um, all right, let's just do this. Whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. Do this, do this. Do this. There we go. Let's, let's play correctly here at the very least. Two lands. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, it's a playable way to kill this. I don't know. This is terrible. Um, I'm gonna burn down the house here. This seems a bit aggressive to me, but we're in such a bad place and we're gonna have to discard anyway. So I'd rather do this when it can't deal damage to us because they have no colors among their permanents, so, like, we're not going to take a hit. Um, you got to think, if they have a Goldspan Dragon in hand or they draw one next turn, like, they're able to take us down a good substantial chunk, so I'm not really interested in just dying to that. Uh, so I'd much rather be able to, to kill that off the face of it and hopefully not die. All right. Oh, sick. <laughs> All right. Cool. Uh, now we're pretty dead. So this is going to be for eight. So we're dead next turn. <laughs> oh my gosh. Expressive iteration. Give me something, please. What is this? All right, whatever. We're dead. Let's talk about this. Uh, let's talk about this deck. <laughs> All right, so first and foremost, Country Fried, I am so sorry we didn't even get a win for you, my friend. I really wish we could have. I felt like, you know, we had all the lands and we had a lot in that last game. We dug a lot, but it's so threat light, I guess, that we just had a really rough time finding it. I really don't think we need any more threats. I just think we're kind of getting unlucky, but hey, whatever it is, uh, we unfortunately didn't get a single win. But you know what? I still love the deck. I think this one is a tried and true classic at this point. We know this deck can be good, uh, despite me not doing so well with it. Um, and so I think that this is a situation where we either had bad luck or I definitely didn't play correctly. Uh, and both of those are very likely options. So um, the reality is, if I did misplay and you guys let me know in the comments section, just be kind about it. I'd appreciate it because truthfully, I would like to get better at this deck, but unfortunately, just not a great thing on my end so it didn't work out so well i do still think this deck has the like win potential though it's very very good 
uh, just needs to be a little more consistent. So hopefully we can get it there. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Again, thank you to Country Fried for uh, giving us this list and letting us check it out. This has been a blast. Uh, and everybody, go check out the Glorious Sunrise podcast if you didn't. New episode did drop this morning. Uh, episode number two. We're early in those, those stages. So definitely check that out, guys. But thank you so much again for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll see you guys later.